Welcome to a debate which is called the rise and fall of sex. Although most of us are critical of gender stereotypes, few deny the existence of two discrete biological sexes. Yet contemporary biology shows human sex can't be reduced to a simple story about X and Y chromosomes, and some neuroscience claims that there's no such thing as a gendered brain either. Could biological sex itself then be an illusion constructed from human categories? Can we overcome or refashion these categories to suit 21st century needs? Or is this a futile attempt to deny the reality of two biological sexes? I'm going to introduce our panelists. On my right, Barry Barnes, who is a sociologist and co-founder of the Influential Strong Program, uh, an approach to the sociology of scientific knowledge described by inheritors such as Bruno Latour as unparalleled uh, in its importance for the field. Barry is also a member and former co-director of the Center for Genomics, in society at the University of Exeter, where he examines the impact of intersubjective agreement and society on genetics. On my immediate left, Daphna Joel. Daphna is a neuroscientist and senior member of the Faculty of School of Psychological Sciences at the Tel Aviv University. She is the author of a forthcoming book called Gender Mosaic, Beyond the Myth of Male and Female Brains, which argues that our current ideas about biological sex need to be challenged and presents a theory that male and female brains are not different by nature. And uh, finally, on my far left, Stuart Ritchie, who's a lecturer at King's College London at the university's Social Genetic and Developmental Psychiatry Centre. His writings appeared in the Washington Post, Wired, Eon, etc., on topics ranging from uh, IQ tests mean anything and to peer reviewing. He recently conducted a study to examine sex differences in the adult human brain coming to the conclusion that the brains of men and women differ in the same way as their height and stature. So those are our three panellists. I think we're in for a lively debate here. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to turn to you, Barry. And I think the overarching question we're asking here at the beginning is, could biological sex itself be an illusion constructed from human categories? <clears throat> Looking over at Barry's notes, the title of his notes is Sex Pitch. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm going to talk mainly about genetics when we get to the debate because it's long been my own f in focus of interest when looking at the sciences. Biological sex in particular um, has interested me. Now, way back in 1967, the sex of a newborn was fixed by visual inspection and a register of births certified its status or male, ma as male or female. That's all they were allowed to do. <clears throat> But cytogeneticists at this time had begun uh, to use a quick and simple test to determine uh, the genetic sex. Uh, and they did thousands of applications of this uh, simple thing. Mostly were normal cases, but they, they identified quite a few anomalous ones by use of the genetic test. Uh, and that made the genetics of sex much more complicated that it, than it had been and researchers realized that conveying what they knew of sex to others had become at the same time much more difficult and much more important. <clears throat> now, of course, it couldn't have been predicted then that in just a few decades, we would live in a world wherein sex is mostly referred to as gender and genetics is mostly molecular genetics. I've watched accounts of genetic sex become ever more detailed and complex over a long period. And I've seen nothing to suggest that sex, that's biological sex, is an illusion. Although it has been said, and it's being said in another debate, that the world's all an illusion. And how would we know if it were? <laughs> As to entries on birth certificates, however, they are neither empirical descriptions, like an empirical science would make, nor are they illusions which seems to be the only alternative that comes to the mind of many people. Their statuses, their attributions of status that indicate to other members of society how they ought to treat the person designated and assigned. And if other statuses join or replace those in current use, nothing changes. They're still all statuses. They don't describe empirical states even if they're based on empirical states. <clears throat> now, 
It may be that the registrars of tomorrow in a more tolerant society are going to do an awful lot better assigning sex statuses than those who long ago assigned a sex to an intersexed newborn and kept that assignation confidential. But even they did no more long ago than attach a status to a child and act with her mind to how she was treated in the future. We need to understand statuses. Thank you very much. So it's a story of increasing complexity in our understanding in general, but this concept of the status is what's key to what you're arguing. Thank you very much. Yeah. Daphne, let me come to you. So there's a short answer to the question. The short answer is, uh, I don't think that biological sex is an illusion, but I do think that our binary conceptualization of sex is an illusion. And the long answer is that this is a tricky question because we use biological sex for at least two different meanings. We use biological se sex to describe the divisions of humans into sex categories, male and female, according to the form of their genitalia. By imposing a binary division on, on the, the form of the genitalia, we ignore or we mistreat individuals that do not fit into one of these categories. So whereas most humans or the, most of humans' genitalia uh, do fit into the categories because they have only male typical organs or only female typical organs, some humans don't. Now the other meaning that we use biological sex is to relate to all the genes and hormones that are involved in the formation of the genitalia. And there of course exist these genes and hormones. But the binary framework misleads us to believe that these genes and hormones are arranged into distinct sets, one appearing in males and the other appearing with females. And this is simply not true. So except from a few genes on the Y chromosomes, all humans share all the genes and the hormones that are involved in the formation of the genitalia. And they, these genes and hormones, especially the hormones, are highly dynamic, highly reactive, highly overlapping between humans, and they clearly do not come into distinct form uh, like the genitalia do. Now, these genes and hormones affect not just the genitalia, but also other systems, and one of them is the brain. And again, the, the uh, binary framework misleads us to believe that sex effects on the, on the brain add up consistently within individuals as sex effects on the genitalia often does to create distinct male brain and female brains. And this again is not true because sex effects on the brain usually mix up. So each one of us has features in the brain that are more common in males and others that are more common in females. So although sex affects the brain and although there are group level differences between the brains of men and women, they do not add up to create male brains and female brains, but rather mosaic brains. Thank you very much. So uh, going back to your <coughs> early phrase there, something maybe the uh, sex isn't an illusion, but the binary construct is perhaps an illusion. OK, thank you, Stuart. Thanks. Well, let me just uh, uh, push back slightly on the binary thing. Um, the, the, obviously, this is a topic which everyone gets very upset about, and, and it totally is understandable because, as uh, uh, both Barry and Daphne have said, we talk about sex in terms of this thing which we study in the lab, and also in terms of this thing which is super important in society, and it's how we label people, and it's, it's often how we treat people as well. So it's completely understandable that there's a lot of uh, uh, bad feeling around this topic. Um, people on both sides, you know, people who uh, argue against the importance of sex differences get accused of being sex difference deniers. And, uh, or sex deniers or gender or whatever you want to call them. And people on the other side get accused of being sexists and neurosexists and, and so on. So there's, there's all sort of uh, 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 epithets going back and forth on this. Um, but the question is, what does the actual data say? So I've um, uh, been interested for a little while in, in uh, differences in the brain. Um, and we took a, one of the largest samples of people that's ever been uh, uh, gathered all together, the UK Biobank sample uh, last year. And we published a paper that showed that there were indeed very large differences in things like uh, uh, brain volume, brain surface area, brain uh, the, the cortical thickness, so the thickness of the outside of the brain, uh, between people who identified as male and people who identified as female. They just People who just checked it on the form. We're not talking about a genetic test here, we're just what people say about themselves. Um, and there were large differences. Females had thicker cortices, which is associated with, uh, uh, for instance, things like having a higher intelligence. Uh, uh, males had uh, uh, larger volumes, which is also associated with having a higher intelligence, which so it's kind of 
uh, there's there's one for both uh, sides there. Um, and 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 uh, but but perhaps more interesting than my study, which is actually quite a boring uh, paper. More interesting is is uh, when people look across all the differences. They add up all the differences and see how good you, you are if you just have someone's brain. How accurately can you build a model that would predict whether they had said they were male or said they were female? To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.